Welcome back to Red Brook Honey in Scarborough. We're up at the 43rd latitude in the state of Maine. And this is my absolute favorite time of the beekeeping year because what you're looking at here is what many people call an invasive species. It is a kind of a plant that, that takes over. People don't like it in their yard, but the one benefit and the reason this beekeeper lets it into his yard is because the Japanese knotweed or bamboo, depending on how you refer to it, is the source of what I think is the best nectar for the honeybee. These white plants, these white flowers here, they bloom in late August and that little teeny white flower, see how small that is? Generates the most beautiful crimson red honey and if you've been with me before I've talked about uh, the red fall honey we're getting ready to harvest the fall honey uh, we do it the week after Labor Day and as you can see uh, we've got a nice stand of it here see all that white it doesn't show quite as well as I'd like it to um, the sun's kind of going behind the cloud here but I'm standing back and there are just thousands thousands of honeybees there's some wasps and there's some hornets in here and they're sucking the nectar they suck the nectar out of the flower they bring it back to the hive and they dry it down to and cure it down to honey the nectar here is 50 60 percent liquid they bring it back to the hive and they um, fan it add some enzymes and um, dry it down to 18 percent and cap it as honey and this is an excellent source of uh, protein it's an excellent source of carbo excuse me carbohydrates for the honeybees and I doesn't come out very well here but you can see in the center there there's a honeybee um, I'm trying to zoom in on them but there's just thousands of them I dare say tens of thousands because we have 25 colonies here in the yard and this time of year the colonies are 40 or 50,000 bees apiece and uh, a significant portion of those are of foraging age out and about and foraging on the honey. Here let me try to zoom in on this girl right here and you can see how big she is compared to the size of that little flower. That's one of my darker bees. That's one of the Russian bees that we have. We have different kinds. We have Scarborough mutt bees and Russian bees and Italian honeybees and several different races. We try to mix them and, and do the one have maintain the ones that that overwinter the best. In this yard here in Scarborough, last winter we lost no colonies over the winter, and in large part because we left them plenty of this fall honey. For them to uh, overwinter on this year. There she is. That's one of my lighter bees. That was a, an Italian bee. And I'm looking for another one to see if there's anything in the sunshine here. There's a few. This girl right here. See her. But if I have a favorite time of year, I love keeping bees. But this time of year, when the when the Japanese knotweed is blooming, late August here in uh, Maine, southern Maine, this is one of the best sources of honey. It actually gives them a chance. As you can see, they're flying from over here. There's a yard with 13 or 14 hives in it down there, uh, part of what we have. And they, uh, what you can see, it doesn't really show very well in this picture, is that field to the right of those hives is just loaded with goldenrod. So this time of year it's Japanese knotweed or bamboo and uh, we have it here on several properties and it works to the bees advantage. Um, bamboo, Japanese knotweed and then what we're just starting to see the beginning of now is the aster. Um, and the aster will bloom for the entire month of September here and that will be the last forage that our honeybees get before dandelion next May. So, gives you an idea. Thanks for tuning in. Red Brook Honey, Scarborough, Maine.
Save the Japanese Knotweed.